Welcome to devmode.fm, a podcast dedicated to the tools, techniques, and technologies used in modern web development. I'm Andrew Welch from NY Studio 107. I'm Jonathan Melville from MDD in Atlanta. I'm Patrick Harrington from Mildly Geeky in Boston. I'm Marian Nulevant here in Portland, Oregon. And today we have on Ben Parizic from Barrel Strength Design. Hi, Ben. How you doing? Hi. Hey, thanks for having me. And Ben, you do the uh, the Sprout plugins. That's how some people in the craft community might know you, right? That's correct. Sprout yeah. and straight up craft. But today we're not sprouting anything. Today we are talking about hurting the client through the great migration. And so what I mean by that is we all probably have clients that are running on what we might consider legacy systems or just, you know, maybe they're running... Uh, an older version of WordPress, or they're running an older version of Expression Engine, um, or maybe they're coming from something completely different, uh, or they have Craft 2, and because we want to keep them modern and updated, we want to try and get them running on Craft 3, right? So the question is, how do we do that? And I don't mean from a technical point of view, which if we have time, we can get into that uh, in a little bit. Uh, I mean more from a, you know, if they don't agree to do it, you're not being paid to do it, so it's not going to happen. So how do we convince people to kind of get on board and and do this? Have you um, ever run into this, Ben, at all, in terms of a conversation you need to have with a client? Yes, on a, on a regular basis. I I feel that this conversation is is hard to have when you're you're new in business because you don't realize all of the the nuances that you learn from your mistakes over time. But after you've been doing it several years, you realize this conversation really starts with the onboarding process with the client and and getting their expectations clear that a website isn't a a one-time cost or a project cost, but something that has ongoing costs related to it. And the more you can do to kind of set the stage for there's, there's times in the life of a website where there will be large project costs and there's other times will be lower maintenance costs. Right. Um, the more you can kind of remind them of that several times a year and, and have an easier time when these conversations. Come up. But I'll tell you, you know, from my personal experience, so I have a couple of clients that are running older expression engine sites. One of them is running, God, I think it's EE two, seven, three, I think is what he's running. Um, and there's a whole cascade of things going on with it. So he has a, an e-commerce site, and he is now failing the PCI compliance check uh. be- because he's running P- PHP 5.3, I think it is. Um, and it's a whole confluence of horrible things because we can't update to PHP 7 until we update the version of Expression Engine because it doesn't even work with PHP 7. And in order to fix the PCI compliance stuff, we need to do that upgrade. We also need to get it up and running uh, with, uh, I would like to use Let's Encrypt. It involves moving to a whole new VPS. So we're looking at a pretty expensive proposition in terms of the amount of time that has to go into doing this. And it's the kind of thing that he kind of knows we need to do. But he doesn't feel great about it from the point of view of he's going to be spending a lot of money, but there's going to be nothing hugely visible that is a whole lot better, you know, once we actually do that. I mean, Patrick, have you ever had anyone kind of in that situation? Yeah, I mean, nothing quite like that comes to mind. Um, But I have had many conversations with clients about technical debt. And that it's not the case where you build a website and you put it up there. And that investment that you made up front will just never decay or never, you know, never have issues down the road. There, there does need to be some money put in over time to keep up. And, you know, it feels like, you know, there may have been times in the past when could have done, you know, a point release of PHP or, you know, gone from Expression Engine 2.7 to 2.8 to, to two, uh, of course, those can be painful with that upgrade process. But, right. um, yeah, now, you know, all this time having gone by without having put that investment in and maintain that investment now means that you're really in a, in a hole and a whole bunch of things have to happen at the same time. And, you know, it can almost be more painful when you would try to do it all in one felt swoop than, um, you know, kind of maintain things, maintain things over time. 
Yeah, and we were hamstrung on this project because we were using uh, cart throb, like an oh, old, yeah. an old <laughs> broken garbage version of cart throb, not the latest one that Vector has yep. Yep. acquired and done stuff with. But I, I, I spent a considerable amount of time writing a plugin for EE just to make sure that cart throb worked. Like there's an entire plugin that fixed bugs and oh, cart- oh. uh, it, it was it was horrible. Absolutely horrible. And uh, but that's the reason why we're on that old of a system to begin with is, you know, yep. we realized that we can't touch anything or it's going to fall over. Now, we did end up moving over to subscriptions. Um, mm-hmm. So as part of this migration process, we'll also be ripping cart throb completely out of it. Um, but I, I think it's really interesting to figure out ways that we can talk to our clients to help them understand like why we actually really need to do this. And, you know, I've heard people make kind of analogies in the past about, well, it's like your car, if you park it outside, it's just going to rust, you know, you got to do the maintenance on it and eventually you got to get a new car. Um, and I think that that's fine, uh, to you, you guys know, I love me a good analogy, (laughs) but then that gets me thinking about, well, would a mechanic ever tell you, I'm not going to fix your car because it's too old. Go get a new one, you know? And so that can be sometimes kind of a hard conversation to have with people because, and then, then we can talk about, well, are we in the business of being, uh, car mechanics that maintain the car that maybe, you know, we put together or someone else put together, or, um, are we in the business of selling new cars? And uh, Jonathan, I think you have some kind of scenario kind of similar to this, right? Can you talk about it a little bit, a, a client that you have that's in an older version of EE? Yeah. I mean, I I kind of go back and forth about what you just described, the analogy with the, with the car mechanic. Because, right. you know, I think all of us as business owners, we we prioritize serving our clients well. Mm-hmm. And so it seems kind of... It seems kind of a crappy thing to do to say to your client, well, you know what? It's so old. I'm just not going to help you. If you want something new, you're going to have to pony up some dollars and uh, then I'll be able to help you. But by the same token, it it is a little bit different. I mean, than um, like a car mechanic refusing to work on your old car. Hmm. Like it may be, it may be, you know, um, not as easy for them or whatever uh, to work on an older car. I don't know. Actually, it's probably the opposite. (laughs) It's probably easier to work on an old car. But, but for us, I mean, so the site that you mentioned um, that I have been talking to you about, it's really become sort of a borderline impossibility for mm. me to even continue to work on this site mm. from, from many different standpoints. Well, like I mean, what, what technical things make it Yeah, so a like the, 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 the client is, is, is wanting, you know, new functionality added to this site. So this is a Expression Engine 2 site mm. um, from, well... I mean, it's a couple of years old. Um, so going if you did it, if you're going to tell me you did it last year, I was going to yell no, at you. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's many. It's pretty old at this point. Okay. But I mean, even things like there's no way to upgrade it. First of all, because it relies on you know all these all these plugins like assets and stuff like that. There's just no way to do it. Hmm. Um, there's no way to upgrade it, and so we're stuck using what we've got. So like adding the functionality, we're stuck like trying to find these old plugins on the devotee side. Oh or, God. You know or so you're doing or an archaeolo- archaeological dig looking at like old posts? Dig. And then the other <laughs> problem was even like deploying it. So like we, we pulled it up after a couple of years and like I tried to, I tried to deploy it and it failed because Bauer has changed. Like it's deprecated now. Yeah, yeah. There's something about the URLs have changed and like I, and then I have to update Bauer on the on the <laughs> Docker <laughs> container. Like just forget it. You know, I mean it. Yeah. It just comes to a point where it's like <laughs> this really is impossible for me to to con- to continue to maintain this for you. So we, we need to do something new, or at the very least, just exceedingly unpleasant, right? Um, um uh, yeah, you're probably technically correct. Ex- exceedingly unpleasant would probably be more accurate. Yeah, yeah, we had something a little bit similar where it it was uh, a client that we had finished a site for them. I think it was like late 2012, maybe late 2013, actually which was an expression engine site. And at the time that was our go-to CMS and, and it worked well for them for years. But in the time since we had built them one, maybe two craft CMS sites. Mm-hmm. And that actually helped quite a bit because 
they really loved what they were able to do in craft were getting increasingly frustrated with what they weren't able to do, you know, right. things like live preview, things like that, and expression engine. Um, and that actually helped quite a bit when they had kind of seen that the grass is greener sometimes on the other side. Um, and we actually had a pretty easy discussion moving them over and rebuilt the site and migrated all their data and all of their old business logic and all that fun stuff over in a project we did, did early this year. So um, do, do you remember what was in that discussion that you had with them? Or were they, they had kind of seen how sweet the fruit tasted on the other side, right? So it was probably a little bit easier for you? Yeah, it was really that. It was, you know, I, I think there was some things that they've been asking, what would it take to add live preview to expression engine? What would it take to add, oh, God. Um, you know, <laughs> matrix type functionality? And I'm like, you know, with all this, I think we could just, you know, port all over the markup. You know, luckily there's some similarities between Twig and the old um, expression engine templating language. Right. Um, Did that yeah, thing have a name, be, by the way? That's a good question. I think it was I mean, just called like the templating language or something, right? Yeah, I don't think there's ever yeah. any branding on it. And okay. uh, I'd be interested to know if there was, but. Um, I think it's called the P I T A language. You know the, the yeah, right, the PETA. The, the, oh, here you know, we go again. Yep. The, the funny thing they, that you uh, are saying they, they're like, how you know how hard would it be to add live preview <laughs> to uh, Expression Engine? Yeah, um, yeah, and that's what Brandon actually cited. Brandon Kelly from Pixel and Tonic. He said that you know I had this idea for live preview, and I looked into adding it to Expression Engine, mm -hmm. and realized it would be impossible to do. Um, yeah, yeah. Unless he was, it was the easier author. to write a new CMS. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, uh, on some level, probably, you know, I mean, at some point, if you, it, it, it's kind of like you've got a, a rickety old house, you know what I mean? At some point, it's easier to just knock it down and build a new one rather than trying to go in and, and reinforce the, uh, the, the walls after the fact. Yeah. But I, I, I'm really interested in the, the conversations that you have with people because. For some people that, you know, they trust me, they know that I am giving them good advice and I'm not just making work for myself. Uh, and they realize that, hey, you know, we really do need to do this and, and keep up to date. Um, but for other clients, like, I have a hard time. I mean, I, I can't really make an, a case for them because they may be, they may have a smaller site. They're not going to benefit hugely uh, or a ton of their business isn't coming from the website. So then I guess the question is, you know, do we continue to work on this old site uh, out of loyalty, um, or do we either say goodbye to the client um, or subcontract it to somebody else to do the maintenance? I think it depends on the the nature of the relationship that you've established with that client right. um, for their maintenance and stuff like that. So if you have this model where they're basically paying you like a flat rate per month and this kind of gets them so much time or whatever mm -hmm. i think that you're naturally going to hit a point with that client where you're losing money yeah right for sure and so it and if, and if that's not the nature of the relationship you have with a client so let's say it's just like they call you whenever they want anything and then you just bill them per hour or whatever then you have to make a decision well is it is the hassle that i have to to, to deal with worth the sort of one-off kind of money that I get from them whenever they, whenever they need something. Yeah. And, and not even that, at least for me and probably for a lot of developers, you know, we're into this because, uh, we enjoy learning new things and, and working on challenging new stuff. I, I was talking about this situation with, uh, Ryan Ireland from Majingo. And one of the things that he mentioned is, yeah, I mean, you know, the problem is that when you get tethered to these, very old legacy systems, you're not doing anything forward thinking from the point of view of you're not learning new stuff that makes you a better developer. Um, and, and I think that something that is very true is that you, you become the type of projects that you take on, you know, in other words, if, if what you are doing is primarily maintaining old sites, like that's what you're going to be do, doing and that's what you're going to be good at. And that's what you're going to be known for. And is that what you want? You know, yeah, I think it matters. You know, is the place where the client is going to get the most value is that matching up with what you're doing or what you want to be doing? Right. And it may be very different than what you were doing a few years ago when you first start an engagement with them. Right. If this is you know an older client, yeah. Um, yeah it's a, it can be a tough conversation, and there's some times where you may have to refer to them to someone else that still works on Expression Engine or WordPress or Drupal or Craft Two, maybe even yeah. if you've really just you know cut ties with Craft Two already, but. 
uh, yeah, it's a, you know, you have to also just decide where they're going to get value and are you still the right person for them? Right. Well, I've I've got got a, Go ahead, Ben. Uh, I've got a metric uh, that helps uh, that I think about as I make these decisions, and it, it comes from a different field. Um, there's an organization called the Gottman Institute that's uh, specialists in marriage, <laughs> marriage and stuff, love, and they they had this office outside their their campus in Seattle or something called like the Love Apartment or Shack. Right? I don't know. The Do Love Shack. The details off the. <laughs> the internet but they, they wasn't that have, wasn't that a b52 couples. song <laughs> they would have married couples come and kind of just hang out in the kitchen and watch tv together and they'd they'd sit and watch them and then they'd code all of their interactions and what they discovered over time was that you could they they were able to predict divorce at some degree when the ratio of positive to negative interactions got above five to one so if you have five interactions and one of them is a negative interaction um that's that's okay you're probably in a healthy relationship but if if that starts to creep up and every other time you're talking to somebody it's a, a positive negative positive negative um it puts a lot of tension on a relationship and i i i feel this applies this is an intuitive uh, application here but i feel this applies in our in our world of agencies and with our clients and especially in these maintenance relationships because often our businesses are so designed around kind of succeeding with projects and maintenance is almost a separate business model that many of our firms don't have strong structure around and so when we enter that maintenance phase communication becomes worse and and when people are reaching out to communicate with you it's a because something went wrong and right. and then so many things have gone wrong that you're trying to reach back out after it's been negative interactions for a year going like, Hey, I've got a good idea. How about we get this site updated to something new? Right. So I, I think just being aware of how to maintain that interaction and trying to keep on the positive side of it, being proactive in your communications and, and signaling end of life for craft two is in 2019 end of life security updates is in 2020 some larger projects you need to be having these conversations already telling those clients mm -hmm. that there are serious considerations of risk and costs that are going to come up and be a part of our discussions in a year i need those on your radar so when i bring them up it's not going to be a surprise to you then yeah and and in the case of for instance the uh one that i brought up about the uh site failing the pci compliance and it's not the end of the world because uh, he just doesn't get a, a discount on the transactions, but it still makes him very aware that there's something that needs to be done. You know what I mean? But for some other sites, uh, like Patrick was saying, they were done a long time ago, and probably what I'm doing now doesn't really square with what I did for them then. Um, and so I, I still have a really hard problem just telling them, you know, hey, forget it. I'm not going to do anything with it. So I typically have a... Uh, a conversation with them, like you mentioned, Ben, about, you know, hey, we should get you to a modern system. And the the primary reasons, uh, first of all, the older the system that they have, the easier I think the sell is. Because you can sit them down, like uh, Patrick was saying, and you can say, hey, look, here's your live preview. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and some other things that I found are useful for getting them on board is giving rolling into the uh, CMS upgrade some client facing uh, perks, you know, like maybe there's, there are some visual things about the site that always bother them that you can address in kind of a, a visual refresh, or um, there are certain features that you can then add to it. But I think it's really important that they see the value in the conversation. You know, we're, we're not just going to be doing something behind the scenes that, that makes your site better. We're actually going to give you something visible um, that is going to improve your site. Uh, but yeah, you, you make a really good point about security, obviously, or maybe it's not obvious. Obviously, I'm going to say obviously again anyway. <laughs> uh, security is, is important, right? And the, the way to handle security is to keep updating stuff. I mean, the, the best thing that you can do, obviously, follow best practices, but you should keep things as up to date as you possibly can. Uh, I think the the alternative too, though, is is saying and being clear with the client that like some 
this is all this all has a cost and some sites just let them die over a couple of years and right. and, and refresh and start new but I, i've found it with many client relationships if you're if you're clear with costs over time up front and you try to really think two three years out of what and have those conversations as part of every include that kind of perspective as part of every budget discussion like i'm going to charge you ten thousand for this project but know that a ten thousand dollar project has about two thousand dollars a year to maintain it successfully over time and if you're not spending at least that much a year you're increasing your risk and risk means that there's a higher chance that somebody hacks it and you need to come and pay me to help fix that there's a there's that somebody could get if that hack revealed other things you could run into legal issues whatever it was but kind of making it clear that this isn't a one-time project fee that you're paying it's something that you're buying into and and you can pay zero over time and quite often you know plenty of sites have been put up on godaddy and sat there for 20 years and yeah. didn't get hacked <laughs> but it's a risk others right. have got hacked and cost thousands of dollars to clean up and i think you make a really good point that this is part of the onboarding process right that we have this discussion when we're scoping out the project to do it for them the first time and if you work at a larger agency you know, the good news is you probably don't have to deal with this. You've probably got a project manager that is already having this conversation with uh, the clients. Um, or if you work as an in-house developer, you don't really have to have this conversation either because then you can make the decisions about, you know, keeping this stuff up to date. Um, but I, go ahead. I was going to say, do any of you have rules of thumb of, I, I kind of think of, I, I in the articles I've read over time, I've kind of pulled some rules of thumb, but I, I'd be curious what others have heard. Um, if if the original project costs whatever, ongoing maintenance for the year costs around 20%, of course, there's a wide variation. And then you might need to rebuild that is similar to the original project cost every three to five years. I, I kind of use those as rules of thumb to start having these discussions, but I'd be curious if anybody else uh, has so thought I don't- about it. I don't want to get too much into that side of things because we, we did do a podcast, it looks like back on May 28th, on web developer support and maintenance contracts. Okay. And I think Jonathan and, and Patrick went uh, into a lot of that stuff kind of in depth. So if you're listening to this and you're interested in that, uh, go to devmode.fm and you can check out uh, episode number 13, uh, web developer support and maintenance contracts. But I do think it's relevant to what we're talking about. And I do think that your point about making sure that this is something we have in our upfront conversation is is really uh, salient. The The thing is, it doesn't always work that way. You know, the real world, you know, maybe we inherited a project that somebody else did. Um, maybe we did a project uh, quite some time ago before we were doing maintenance contracts. And sometimes you can get stuck in an interesting position where you don't really, like doing the work feels awful to you. Not that you don't want to get paid and not that you don't care about the client, but you feel like you're not learning anything or you're not doing using any new technologies or you just feel like you're kind of keeping an old car running uh, and you would much rather be working on kind of a, a newer model. So what I do in cases like that uh, is I have the conversation with a client, you know, let them know here are the benefits to upgrading. Make sure they understand from a security point of view uh, how important it is. Uh, and I think with all of the hacks that have been kind of high profile uh, in the news, I think that that is an easier sell these days than it used to be. Um, and then also just uh, talk about some of the additional features that they're going to get just by upgrading. But at some point, there there's some clients, and I have one, that it just doesn't make any sense to do the updates to it. Um, So what I do in those cases, I don't want to say goodbye to them. Um, What I do is I subcontract it out. You know, I've got some people that do uh, EE maintenance and are more than happy to do it, and I just subcontract it out. So at what point, and Jonathan, maybe you can speak to this because I think this is something that you've been kind of mulling over, at what point does it make sense for you to either step back and subcontract the work to someone else, or does it ever even make sense to part ways with a client? I think I think it all comes down to, um, 
you know, you have to do a cost benefit analysis of that. So mm -hmm. when you start dealing with subcontractors, um, you're even if you subcontract it out, you're still going to have to kind of manage that project. Right. You're probably going to be the one who still is going to have to, you know, uh, be the front facing, you know, person on it to your client. You're not going to let them talk to your sub. Right. Um, so you're still going to you're still going to have a hand in it a little bit. And then also, you know, any money that your client pays you, you're going to have to turn around and handle um, a large portion of that over to pay your sub. So uh, I don't, I, I don't know. I've never been in a situation where I've actually done it. I've thought about it. And I know that's something that when you are, you and I were having this discussion the other day, you said, had recommended just subbing it out. I mean, I, I feel like it probably wouldn't be worth it. But I don't know. I don't know if anybody else has ever has ever done that, and it ended up working out for them. But it just seems to me like it would be more trouble than it's than it's worth. Um, it it depends on what it is, and I wish that I had Earl on here because that is one thing that I have Earl do for me um, is some of the older EE work on on certain sites, um, and it's actually worked out quite well um, because the client has modest needs; they just need a little bit of work done. Um, but from my perspective. Uh, it, it is, it's difficult for me to be working on something that I don't feel I'm, I'm gaining anything from. And I guess that may sound kind of selfish, but I mean that from the point of view of one of the reasons I'm in this business is I love technology and I love looking at the new stuff that's out there. And I love trying to apply best practices to whatever I'm working on. And if I can't do that, I, I'm not. I'm not typically really happy with the stuff that I'm working on. Um, have you ever thought about um, just saying goodbye to a client, Jonathan, even though they're, they're a perfectly good client and there's nothing wrong with them? Um, I, I have thought about it, but only in cases where this is sort of like a kind of call me when you need me client. Right. So I think that that's a huge um, – factor in that decision for me if it's a client where i've already established a relationship with them and in fact i have some kind of contractual agreement right you know to support them for the next year through the next year or something like that i mean i i would never uh walk away from a client like that because i mean that's that's potentially lucrative you know you've got this regular monthly money coming in and so right. i think it would be more tempting to part ways with a client who just kind of wants to call you when they need you Right. And it also, you know, it looks bad. And just as a person, I would feel I would feel bad for would, abandoning yeah. them. You know? Yeah. I'm, I mean, because it's not like, you know, I'm sure we all feel like we're pretty smart folks, but um, um, it, it's it's going to be harmful to the client, really. I mean, it's not like the person you'd be handing them off to is way dumber than you are. But there's always going to be this sort of right. period of time where they're not going to know everything that you've been helping your client with or, or the sort of specific needs that the project may have or whatever, they're just not going to be able to serve them as well as you do. And you kind of don't want to do that to your client. Yeah. I, I fired my parents this year. <laughs> you, you were I, maintaining I, I, some well, kind of I, site. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I was helping them with a like club website and they mm -hmm. even paid me for it. And I, I think more relevant to your discussion here, however, it, I, I think what I did this year is, that helped me with a lot of these decisions is I tried to specialize my business and because right. I was doing too many things and I wasn't, I, I was finding myself spread thin and I was feeling I couldn't service certain clients on certain platforms because I didn't have enough knowledge on my team to do that. Well, right. Um, you can go the subcontracting route, but it really depends how big a business you want to be and how much of a manager you want to be. Yeah. That's a business decision as well. Yeah. And, I had to decide, okay, I, I really want to specialize my business around particular type of thing. I, I, I chose craft CMS. I chose multilingual, multi-regional, multi-site stuff on craft CMS. And I said, I'm going to try to refactor everything I'm doing about the business to really specialize in this thing. And that included going through my client list and saying, who's not helping me get there and reaching out to them and saying, Hey, it's not you. It's me. Yeah. Um, I, I was about to say that you, <laughs> Ben, you, you stole my line. I was, I was about to say you're having the relationship conversation. It's not you. Yeah. It's me. You know, I'm kind of yeah. doing different things now, different stuff but, going on in my but, life. I, I also don't think it's not a, you just kick them to the street and say, sorry, sorry, this email is going to bounce next time you email it. Um, I, I have relationships with many of those 
people still. I tried to help them find somebody else that fit them better. I told them I'd be more than happy to be available in a consulting capacity to help them make decisions or evaluate new hires that they wanted to you know, consider through the process or help get those people up to speed. So there's a there's a transition time where I try to be as helpful as I can to right. to help them move on to a better place. Yeah, and and that's something that I I want to kind of ask Jonathan about too, from the perspective of when I'm if if what you're going to have to do for something is get in there and be editing e temp you know older e templates this is something you're probably never going to use again ever in your life, and does it make sense for you to spend that time, you know, I mean, the, the one commodity that none of us can ever get enough of, uh, is time, right? And how do you want to be spending your time and what makes you happy? And, um, and how do you think you're being the most effective for yourself and for, uh, the clients that you're working with? And, and that's kind of something that I, 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 I wrestle with because I don't want to leave clients unsupported. Um, but I, but I also really, you know, I want to be doing forward thinking things and I want to be learning new stuff and doing new stuff, you know, and there's only so much time. I mean, Marion, have you, uh, you've been listening to us for a little bit. Do you have any, uh, any insights or any, uh, anything you want to chime in on here? I have lots of thoughts. Uh -oh. Um, yeah, <laughs> one of them is that in my experience with sort of larger pieces of software in general, mm -hmm. it's like 90% maintenance. Yeah. And so that's fine. The software needs mostly maintenance, but we as people, if we have the luxury to try and decide what we want to value in our lives, what we want to do with our lives, for some people that's, Hey, I love maintenance. There are people like, Hey, I love maintenance. Hey, yeah. I love bug fixing, you know, but that's not everybody. That's for sure. Not you, Andrew. And it's not really me either. Um, and so the first conversation to have, I think is not with the client about setting expectations, but with yourself mm. about how you want to steer your career and you can't be all of everything for everybody. Right. You know, you can't keep every client who passes however briefly through, through your life and, you know, do their be very best for them. Yeah. And it's better if the way you fail them is not that they wake up one morning and their sight is completely down and you're like, well, <laughs> I have not a clue and zero interest and here are the yellow pages. I'm sure you'll figure this out because you really don't want to be that kind of person but on the other right. hand you know you can't you can't um you can't do what's best for the client you really need to do what's best for yourself and in the and while at the same time trying not to screw over the clients right well and it's it's wonderful when there's a nexus there right where what's best for you is also best for the client you know oh yes I mean, those that... are the clients to to keep and treasure and to you know find subcontractors for when you can't help them at the moment, but down the road, you think they'll be great for you. But, you know, perhaps these older clients, and then you're thinking of, well, I'll find somebody to, to maintain them for a while. You know, perhaps when they're three or five or however many years goes by and they swing around again, they're not going to be the right clients for you because you will have, you know, moved in this direction and they'll have moved in that direction. Right. And if they came and gave you an initial, you know, phone call or thing of interest, you say, oh, well, you know, this, this sounds great, but you should, guys should consider Squarespace. Right. Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. So those ones, get rid of them now. Yeah. And I, I try to follow the camper's motto, right, which is leave things better than you found them. Uh, whatever, whatever the project is that I'm working on, but you're absolutely right. Like you can't take on everything. Um, but let's say that we've got a really good client like Patrick, let's say that you did a, uh, a very large site for someone four years ago. And a good client is going to be one that you 
personally with what you personally want to do that they're going to need that sort of thing. I mean, yeah. that's what makes a good client. Yeah. Okay. So I guess what I mean is a, uh, a client you've had a good relationship with and you recognize you being a, um, an expert in the, uh, the tech business, you recognize that they would benefit. So Patrick, how, how what, what kind of things do you have in the conversation? In fact, Patrick, I know how much you love this. So why don't we do, why don't we do a little role playing? Oh right? boy. I know yep. you, you love it. Nothing, again, nothing weird. Everything's going to be all right. I'm a client. Safe words? No. Okay. I'm a, I'm a client that you did a site for, uh, four years ago and it was a, you know, a decent sized site. It was, uh, let's say it was $30,000, right. Is what it ended up being. And, um, you have a modest maintenance contract with them mm-hmm. just to keep everything up and running. And you, you're recognizing that the work that you're doing on this thing is really, it's getting to the point, you're at the tipping point where it's going to make sense to move it over to a new version of, uh, or, or a new CMS maybe even. You know, maybe you want to move them from Expression Engine to Craft, right? So that's the setup. I'm calling you up, or you're calling me up. Mm. Hey, Patrick, how you doing? Our, our website seems to be running good. Uh, yeah, it's doing all right. Um, yeah, I did want to talk to you about, uh, you know, it, it's been a while since we did the original project and luckily we've been keeping it o- over the years and, you know, keeping the lights on. I did want to raise the conversation to see, you know, have you thought about just getting it up to the latest version, you know, either of Expression Engine, you know, we're finding fewer developers these days are working on Expression Engine 2 um, and, and plugins are really moving over. Or even looking at a different CMS. Um, I know there's some features that you've been asking about, um, you know, that are out there and right now can't be easy, easily accomplished. Um, and, and yeah, I just want to see if that's something that's on your mind. So uh, our, our site works, though. I mean, is there is there something wrong with it? Yep. No. And, and definitely, we're 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 fine to stay where it is. I just want to make sure that um, you know that we never get to the point where someday there's a, a difference between the technology that was there in 2015. And what's there in 2020 and make sure we're keeping up there and we're not ever having to do a a five-year update rather than a a one-year update or a two-year update. Um, And yeah, I just want to make sure we're keeping on top of it all. Well, my my bison hides seem to be still (laughs) selling okay. I mean, is there, what what am I going to get out of of doing this? I don't, I don't really understand. Yeah. And they are selling well. Um, I'm impressed by the variety of um, of colors and tanning that you do, it, uh-huh. it's really quite impressive. But um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're seeing that, especially in the middle of the country, where you know, speeds sometimes aren't as fast as they are here on the coast. The the site's not loading as quickly as it, as it could be. Um, it, you know, it was doing again pretty well under 2015 standards, but these days there's this cat Andrew Welch who's all about getting it down to like 15 milliseconds with page what? caches and stuff yeah well, what's yeah. millisecond is that a metric thing it is it is yeah it's a it's all tens at the end of the day hmm. but uh yeah just trying to get those buffalo hides in their shopping cart a little bit faster is the is the big thing now i have yeah, i have noticed that jimmy joe bob came out with his own <laughs> bison bison hide shop and he he seems to be doing really well i mean is it what's what's funny are you i can't what? <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> all right, uh, all right. Lee who? Yeah. Joe. I don't know. Jimmy Joe Bob. I, Billy I don't Joe know. Bison, yeah. Uh, J- J- <laughs> Billy Joe Bison. Yeah. Billy Joe Bison. But you know, and I did notice that his Jimmy Joe Bob's Bison hide shop has got it's got a lot of really kind of nice pictures and stuff up there. I mean, maybe is, is that something we get when we upgrade this thing? Pictures, yeah. We get, well, we could get you know it, his just looks a little more modern. You know, is that something yeah, we def- could do yeah. when we do when we do this? Can we? Because I, I don't I don't like Jimmy Joe Bob. Uh, n- none of us do. Uh, we could definitely take a look at it. Um, you know, this is a good time that if you are looking at refreshing things, you know, it's better to do that on, on a new system. And, you know, if we're going to be updating your house. Let's, you know, figure out what else can we bundle together and do it all at the same time rather than, you know, break it up. And we have to kind of rev up and rev down each time. It can definitely make sense to take a fresh eye at, at, at things at the same time. Now, something I also notice is there's a, there's another, bison shop that was really strange i was going there to check out my my competition 
And I noticed yeah. it. I, I think they might have been hacked. Mm. What, what what was that about? Well, because there was there was a notice up there, and I, I don't want to say it in good company, but it talked about <laughs> enlarging something that was all across, and had nothing to do with bison. <laughs> And it was it was on his site. So is this something that if we do, you know, how can we make sure that doesn't uh, happen to us? Here? That's a yeah. There, that could be a number of things. I mean, that could just be a, a really open ended uh, advertising campaign that he has going on. No, letting, this is not. <laughs> this was not advertising. This, this is this not is something on. that had anything to do with bison. It was about enlarging something that I don't want to say in pleasant company. Okay, you know what I mean. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It, it very well could be that he was hacked. Um, I'm not going to tell him because you know his loss is your game. But uh, you know it, it is something to keep on top of. Take a look at you know what version are we on? Are there any security vulnerabilities? The longer something stays out there and isn't being updated, the the better chance there is to be hit by something nefarious. And God forbid, we don't want that to happen to your your well-meaning, uh, reputable. Uh, bona fide bison business. So th- th- this will kind of be making sure that the locks are, you know, up to date and, and people are less likely to get in. Is that kind of the idea? Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was good, Patrick. I mean, you know, <laughs> Thanks. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to have a little fun with it, but you know, that's the way it goes. So, <laughs> so Ben, what do you, what do you think of this all? Like, hey, give me an idea of how you would go through the same kind of conversation with somebody in terms of uh, the, the same kind of setup, you know, yeah. I, actually, you know what, I'm going to make you, I'm going to make you do it. Right. Patrick, we got to put him on the hot seat. All right. Well, let's so, do it. Yep. So Ben, <laughs> so Ben, you, you were just calling me up. You did my beautiful bison hide tanning uh, website, e-commerce store about uh, four years ago. And, right. you know, you've done minor maintenance to it and stuff, but you've noticed that as you go in there, you know, you got to make EE template changes and you're running an old version of PHP, so things are slower than they need to be. And anyway, you're calling me up to uh, to talk about it. So, hello. Hello, hello, Andrew. So nice to no, my 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 name is Billy D. Oh, sorry, Billy D. Forgot about the name change. So are you calling uh, about the website? I am calling about the website. I have a few things I'd like to discuss with you. All right. All right. So I uh, need to be a little bit upfront here, and uh, I'd like to talk this through with you. So uh, if you're initially shocked, uh, hang in there, and and we'll talk through it. And I I have your best interests in mind, and I'd like to help you. Uh, uh, I live out in Nebraska. Out I've seen just is. about everything there is to see. There's not much you could do to shock me. Go ahead. All right. Nobody on my team enjoys working on your site anymore. What? And what? <laughs> we're going to have to figure out what to do with it moving forward. You don't uh, like my... You made this thing. What do you mean you don't like it? Are you well, saying that you did bad no, work no, for we, me we four en- years ago? We enjoy we enjoy your products entirely. Nobody enjoys working with the technology anymore. Uh-huh. So th- does that mean that... I mean, you, you're the one that picked this stuff four years ago. Did, did, did you make some bad decisions back then? Well, luckily, when I onboarded you, we discussed this stuff in thoroughly. So I'll, I'll forward you those emails. After I, I, this. I, may, and, I may work with bison, but I've got the memory of a goldfish. So you're yes. going to have to refresh me on this one. All right. What I like to do here is talk about our options and... What is that? Is that the bison? Right now? I think that was one of the bison. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Can you screen share that bison for me? <laughs> so what 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 about this? Why don't you like working on my site anymore? I know we, we like working with you. Here here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to so over time software changes, networks change, everything changes, technologies change, and we need to we need to adapt to those changes. If we don't do anything, that's perfectly fine. Uh, it increases risks over time, but if we uh, well, risks risk, risk don't, don't sound over... perfectly fine to me. All right, <laughs> then that might be a perfect outcome that mm-hmm. we can decide on at the end of this conversation. So, what kind of risks am I running? I mean, I don't understand. You put the the software up there; the software don't change, right? The software doesn't change, but everything around it changes. Oh, I see. The it's kind of like kind of like when the weather changes. Sometimes you got to put a coat on or. 
you know, take your shirt off or, or whatever you got to do, right? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So what, what happens over time in software industry is that software needs to get updated. The versions change and we either need to well, upgrade hold, hold, it. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just dial it back a minute. Now, haven't you been doing that? I, I'm paying you $300 a month to keep this stuff updated. Haven't you been doing that? We have been updating. You haven't, you haven't just been taking my money and doing some weird East Coast thing with it, have you? <laughs> nope, nope. We, we've been spending it on the West Coast. All right. The <laughs> Sorry, I'm uh, trying to trying to keep keep on the right page here. Well, it's important to see how you work under pressure. The we we've got a couple options. We can try to continue updating your site. Wait, well, we can't. What what happens is we've we've hit the end of a road. It's gotten so narrow, and they put up a detour sign, and we need to find a way around on another road. So those options are: we either need to <laughs> upgrade on your current system. Uh huh which is going to be a significant upgrade, or we're going to have to choose a new system and get you migrated over there. Uh, both options are going to be similar in cost, so I think it's worth that we discuss both. And Now, I think I understand where you're coming from with this end-of-the-road thing, because I've got... It's real hard for me. I, I've got my, my favorite bison. Her name's mm -hmm. Bessie, and I, I, I let her come in my house... I let her cuddle with me in bed, and mm -hmm. we have this just wonderful relationship, but I, I look at that bison, and she's starting to turn gray, and she's getting wobbly, and I, I think she's in pain, so I, I you, can, you can hear her right there, right? Yeah, but yeah. I, think, I think at some point, it's time, it's time for us to do the right thing, you know what I mean? To kind of put her out of her misery. Are you talking about something kind of similar with the website? Yeah, I think I think mm -hmm. we're talking about we're using the same language now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So, All right. So that was good. I, I mean, but uh, it was it was it's it's a struggle to discuss without con prior context because right. so much of an emotional conversation is using right. a personality reference to get through it. Right. Right. But I I think in more general terms, what I generally try to do with these conversations is I, I, I like taking a pricing approach because I, I feel prices are a very beautiful, they're a beautiful thing because they don't speak any particular language and mm -hmm. they don't live in any particular geography. They just kind of, they, they translate through all of that. And so if we can present a couple options that are maybe initially similar costs, I, I feel often when clients are confronting change there's already a lot of emotion about oh gosh what's this going to cost me so presenting multiple options as there are similar cost options mm -hmm. at least kind of leads into the discussion and then as you elaborate on the details through that process it can become more apparent which option is going to be more costly or, or not and i think it's very reasonable in the context we're talking craft expression engine and stuff patrick mentioned it's harder to find expression engine developers yeah those are very real costs for a business to say to your client that I'm having I, I I'm having a hard time finding these people and hiring them to make the updates I need. So either my costs have to go up to service what I'm doing for you there, or we need to find a path where the there's a larger market for us to help you out in the future. Right. Those yeah, I mean that makes sense, and I, I think that we need to. Uh, again, in the initial conversation when we are onboarding them, we need to make it clear to them that a website is not something that you build and you're done. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. there is maintenance and it also has a lifespan. Um, and that lifespan can be uh, with regard to the infrastructure, you know, the technical underpinnings of it, but it also can be, uh, you know, just kind of the visual uh, refresh of it. And I think. When you're doing an update, if you can tie those two together, um, I, I just feel like the client is going to see the most value from it, you know? Oh, right. Yeah, definitely. And and in some situations, it gets hard, like you were mentioning, because the, there's so many things that come together. It's hard to just say. Oh, yeah. We, we have a similar, we have a Craft 2 project right now with 10 custom plugins, and it, we inherited it, but we've been prompting the 
costs of an upgrade for the past year already yeah. <laughs> and kind of saying this is a decision that's coming up at some point that we need to deal with and um, I'm not sure we'll succeed in getting through the conversation or not. We're hopeful, but we're also trying to kind of find ways to break the project into smaller pieces and say maybe we can spin off the the front end of the website or the the marketing side of the website out from like the the user side of the website so mm -hmm. that we have a smaller project to to kind of pitch and succeed with before right. we are trying to update everything at once. Yeah, or you can you can do it piecemeal. So, Marion, are you interested in in having a shot at uh, at Billy D, or do you wanna do you wanna pass on this? <laughs> I can try and have All a right. shot at Billy D. All right. So again, you're you're calling. Oh, boy. Okay, Marion, good to hear from you. Uh, so, are you calling me about the website that we got? I am calling you about the website that we got. All right. Um, it's a it's a fine website, as you know. It's it's. A, several years old and it's as finely crafted as my my tan buffalo hides it is and mm -hmm. how many years do your tan buffalo hides last oh my god properly treated they they last for 50 years at least they'll they'll last longer than than you will you know uh, that's that's definitely longer than i will um well i meant the royal well, you but you know nothing nothing personal <laughs> Not even even your buffalo hides. They'll be around for fifty years, but they probably won't be around for five hundred. Well, that's true because if you don't take care of them, I mean, there is some maintenance you got to do on those things, or they're not going to be any there good. There is, yeah, and yeah. there is there is maintenance that you have to do on websites. I'm gonna I want to make the analogy to a to a car rather than to a buffalo hide because I have more experience with cars which is that i have more experience have, with buffalo but okay yeah, go ahead but go you ahead. have some experience with cars you, you can you can i ride bessie into town every week to go get groceries so no i i don't i don't really have much for cars but go ahead i, I understand what they are i've seen them in the them hollywood, hollywood movies so go ahead they have hollywood movies well mm -hmm. a car you can drive a car and and uh if you like fail to change the oil in the car, bad things will happen to that car. That's true. And we've been changing the oil in your car. Mm -hmm. We've got a maintenance contract. We've been changing the oil. We've been doing what we can to keep this car going for, for a while. But things change. Um, people's what people want out of cars is is changes. Like, no, it's true. People are not so happy with a car that you have to crank it to get it to start. And or you know what are, you know what I think is crazy. What I think is crazy yeah. is kids green, growing up these days, they'll never understand what it is to roll a window down. You know, all the, all them new cars they just have those buttons. I remember we used to have a, a crank that we have to crank it up and down. You remember that? I do. I do. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. That definitely is a loss, and some of the, you gain some things and you lose some things. Mm -hmm. But times change. You know the yep. the roads are getting a lot faster. You you're not you're not okay with a car anymore with a top speed of 35 miles an hour. And uh, and plus a car, if you you have it too long, I mean, you know, it starts to not look so good anymore. You know. It starts to not look so good anymore, yeah. and then when something goes wrong with it, you know, your hubcap falls off, and you need a new hubcap. They don't make those hubcaps anymore. Mm. It's not like you can just go and get one because they stopped making those hubcaps somewhere. Yeah, I'd have we're to... kind of reaching the same situation with your website. And so, you know, you can keep a car going for a long time. There, there are people who are keeping those Model A's and Model T's going. And Yeah, well, I got, a, I got an old pickup. That, but that's, I got an that's old pickup that whenever I need to get it repaired... I gotta mm -hmm. go down to the junkyard. I gotta go down to to Jimmy B's junkyard and pick out the the parts that I need. Is, are you saying there there's no kind of junkyard for software where I can get this old stuff from? Well, there are junkyards for software, and if you want to keep your old website going, you may need to find a junkyard for the software. But but you don't software, you don't run a junkyard, is what you're saying? I I don't run a junkyard. I mm -hmm. have great respect for the people who do and the the ways they serve the world. But that is one option: is for you to to keep that car going and as you know as that website going as a as a real vintage thing. 
And I'll, I'll be honest with you. I mean, one of the reasons I got that pickup back in the day is I wanted to impress the ladies. I mean, honestly, mm-hmm. that is one of the thing, one of the reasons why I got it. And these days, it, I, I don't need to do that no more. But it probably you, gives a different impression these days. Yeah, it does. But you know, I don't need to impress the ladies no more. I got a a, a wife and kids, and I, I'm all done with that whole thing. But mm-hmm. on my website, I still want to impress people. For sure. sure. Mm-hmm. So you probably you probably do not want to have a more and more aging looking website. It's, mm-hmm. it's not that the website changes, but the world changes and it starts to look older. So and I, I also uh, feel when I'm driving this pickup down the road, if I'm going a long distance, I kind of feel like I'm gambling. You know, I kind of feel like I'm I'm rolling the dice. Like, am I going to break down? And God forbid, I break down somewhere in the middle of nowhere in Nebraska. I'm going to be sleeping out there. You know, and I, I don't yeah, no, I don't want that to happen to my website. That that could happen to your website. That mm-hmm. it can it can uh, stop working, or it could get hacked, and people can put you know unsavory pictures of unsavory buffalo up on your website. Oh, like that, <laughs> like the <laughs> like Jimmy's website where they had that. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah that. I, I saw that. That was you saw. Was, oh my God, I feel I feel terrible. I'm sorry that you had to see that. Yeah, well, you know the world is has a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. No, that's, that's good, though. That was good. Oh, my God. So, yeah, so there you go. We, we, can, we want to talk about how you can have a website that is safer. Right. That will continue to run, you know, because you get those cracked engine blocks or whatever, and it just may be time for a completely new one. I, I like it. Let's do it. So, All right, I'll send you a I'll send you a proposal. <laughs> that, that was good. That was good, Marion. You're very very deliberate and actually very convincing on it. Um, oh, so, good. <laughs> so Ben, you you have a website called the the Great Migration dot net that I think you made you know kind of a while ago. So I'm guessing that you have done a whole lot of these migrations. And are there any other kind of pearls of wisdom that you can pass along? Primarily from, and you know, if, if there's demand for it, we could do another podcast on uh, how to do this from a technical point of view. Um, but I first want to have the conversation about how to get it to happen from a, uh, you know, a logistical or a, uh, a funding point of view. Uh, do you have any pearls of wisdom that you want to pass along or any kind of horror stories or experiences that you've had? Oh, yeah. I, I So, yeah, we I run a website called thegreatmigration.net, and it's a... Uh, it's it's a I, I think we should qualify it is definitely not what we're talking about here in kind of like a existing relationship upgrade. Well, but it's more of like a, a standalone like you are doing the upgrade kind of thing. So you've already you've already made the decision. Mm-hmm. Um, so that helps get through that conversation. <laughs> right. Um, and I I think what I've learned from the the project uh, it was kind of something that i noticed we were doing a lot of even for our own clients that even you know you have these relationships where where you just need to get people migrated and and we all like to work with new technologies and i felt well why don't i try to to develop a specialization around this because having one will help us keep moving forward to the new technologies and um and 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 do that more but, but now, is that something that you enjoy doing? Is it you? Oh, is it oh, yeah. is it me? Or? I do enjoy it. It's okay. it's 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 an interesting thing because I, I find a lot of times migrations are very simple, uh, technically speaking, right. but but they're very tedious because they touch everything. Yep. And in in the clients we've worked with through the process, a lot of people that contact us through the site just don't even know what they're looking for. They just mm-hmm. know they want to migrate, but they don't even know what the price range might be. They don't really know what their options are. And it's, it's a little bit of an education process to just kind of help them know what what to consider. And then others are very um, clear on, uh, you know, uh, certain technology is out of date or dying and they're no longer happy and they want to get off it. And that that's more of a discussion of how do we how do we get a price range and stuff. And the price range is often hard to come by. I often give back a very wide range to start off and mm-hmm. and have to get into a discovery period before we really have enough information about a code base to know what to do. If there's, I mean, if there's any like quick takeaways, 
I, I don't know. I think we get into technical takeaways fairly quickly. I'd say try to keep things one to one as much as possible. So don't try to throw in a redesign when you're migrating. Um, hmm. Get your data model updated. Oh, you mean first. in the order? Like you can technically be doing them at the same time, but in terms of the order. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah generally, yeah. even if you kind of have to code your. I mean, often you have templates in your one site, and you can keep the same design going to the new site. It might not be the best design. It might not be the cleanest coded templates, but often just keeping them the same will keep the whole project simpler mm -hmm. because as you migrate to the new site and somebody starts saying, well, could we move the nav this way? And can we do that there? All of a sudden you've got two complex problems kind of coming right. together and it kind of an exponential effect. So I generally recommend try to keep things as one-to-one -one as possible. Yeah, for data. sure. Like yeah. as you are learning programming, like you learn that very quickly, right, Marion? Where if you if you want to try and get something working, like do it one thing at a time and make sure that thing works and then move on to the next thing, right? When you can, yes. yeah. Yeah, when, right, when you can, right? It's not always possible. But, I, you know, it's I think it's useful to talk about, and I think, Marion, we've discussed this before, I think, I don't know, my memory is, is going on me, um, where I, I think that a lot of times it is helpful to just start afresh on a project, just kind of in general. So for instance, uh, you know, just SEOmatic for Craft 2. When I wrote that, first of all, I didn't know Craft very well, so I did some things not the, the greatest. Um, and then also it just kind of was born organically. And then when it went to do the version for craft three, I just, I started completely from scratch and I was able to fix everything that I, uh, thought that I didn't do well, uh, in the first one, because I was kind of given a clean slate. And while building websites isn't exactly the same, I think that you can still get kind of the same benefit from that, right? From starting with, all right, here's what I learned in doing it before. Now let's, let's do it again and let's do it a little bit better. Right. I sometimes say this in just to clients, but I, it's also true. It's like, I would like to, we'd love to help you with this project. We'd like to build it once. And then when we're done, we'd like to start over and start building it again. <laughs> and with the right kind of client, that's probably okay. With the wrong kind of client, that's not going to go well. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to go well at all. Uh, uh, to, to, before you get off the yeah. SEO topic, though, I think that's another highlight. I would definitely say if you are approaching a migration and mm -hmm. that is often forgotten is... Um, don't don't let a client project overlook the fact that it's not just a technical update. Right. There's often there's often a lot broader search results and things to consider that you're going to want a migration strategy in place for. You're going to want to monitor things ahead of time so you know where they stood before you made big changes, mm -hmm. and then you're going to have want to have a period of monitoring afterwards so you can make sure that you clean up anything that you might have. Yeah, overlooked. before I do anything on on any site. I take metrics, you know, whether they're performance met metrics, SEO metrics, you know, whatever the case may be, so that after I've done the work, I have something that I can show the client, like we went from here to here, you know, and also just as a sanity check to make sure that in the process of doing it, as you say, uh, we didn't make anything worse, right? Because you, you need that baseline. Well, I think the, the interesting thing is often when you create the baseline, there's lots of errors and issues in it. Mm -hmm. So it, it's almost a defensive strategy as well, because when you when you flip the switch and everything changed and the client logs into their site and says, oh, why isn't this section working? Right. And it might have not been working on the first site. <laughs> right. right. And, and you often can't get the full picture when you're just deal it's yeah. a lot of a lot of these sites are lots of code. You can't be testing every single page you're testing broad sure. stroke things, making sure there's not errors being thrown when you run a scan or something like that. So having an idea of how many errors are on a site is very helpful because it, it when somebody starts saying, why are there so many issues on the new site? You can say, well, look, there are so many on the last, or ideally yeah. you tell them there's a bunch on the last before you even get to that stage. Yeah, and I, and I also use that um, as a strategy to help them get things moved over. You know, I, I show them, you know, hey, here's where you are, are at performance wise, or here's where you are at SEO wise. And I think that in the process of doing this upgrade, we can improve them both, you know, and it, it can get a little bit dicey, because if you're showing them a site that you did four years ago, um, and it's not performing well, they'll be like, well, why didn't you do a good job the first time, you know? Yeah, um, that's a tough one. yeah. Uh, but Patrick, do you I know that you I've worked with tons of clients over the years, and you have handled a lot of uh, migrations in, in the process. 
do you have any kind of pearls of wisdom that you can leave us with in terms of, uh, you know, get, getting clients on board, migrating, or or have you had any really uh, horror stories that you can relate? Because everyone loves a good. Tra- <laughs> every, well, I mean, everyone loves a good train wreck, right? Because it makes us feel better. Because we've all had one, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think, first of all, try to find out where their pain is and where they're going to see value. And if they're going to see value with the migration, then push for it. If it's not really going to bring them value, then it's understandable as to why they would really push back on it. And right. it wouldn't feel like a wise investment for them. And who could blame them at that point? So unless you can make that business case, um, yeah, that, that may be a tough conversation. And it may be something that, you know, they may say no now, but in a year they yep. might say yes. So keep your options open, right? Yeah, and it, and it is good to have anecdotes of people who you know said no, we'll be okay, we'll be okay, and then they weren't okay. You have any? Um, you got any you can share? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I've certainly I have some clients that are on older Drupal sites and neglected to. Um, oh, that hack! Up. Yeah, we've had a couple just in the last six months, and mm. um, luckily it's the sort of thing where I have to get on the horn and, and tell them, hey, you, we need to get this done, and we need to get it done in the next 48 hours, because mm-hmm. that's when they annou- or they're or they going to announce in 48 hours, and from them we have six hours. Right. Um, and that can be tough, because if they're one point release behind, that's you know a nice and easy upgrade. If they're 20 point releases behind, oh, that's, God. we're going to find a whole lot of things. Yeah, um, lots of stuff is going to break, especially if yeah, they're major so, versions, right? Yeah, so, you know, little horror stories like that can help just make it real for them as to what it would look like and things like that. Um, yeah, look, I mean, I've been pretty lucky. We, you know, we tend to scope out our migrations pretty well in terms mm-hmm. of, um, you know, doing either a paid discovery or just getting a really good handle on what it is so that, you know, we're, we're pricing those properly when we do do a migration. Um, and yeah, either having a good ongoing relationship and, you know, just, doing small releases or small updates along the way, or, you know, if we do part ways, just um, when they do get to that point, um, you know, just sending them to a person that can help them out. Do you, have, do you ever have any clients that just flat out say no? Like, no. Like, I'm, I'm running EE 1.8, and no, I don't want to upgrade. Yeah, not my own direct clients, but I've worked for other agencies, and I have had to make small changes to an EE 1.7 Ooh. Uh, site. Ooh. <laughs> it's still out there, and it's just amazingly it's still running um yeah uh, yeah it happens it happens wow i mean it's Im- impressive that it's still running but i also yeah. and and nothing against ee but just old software in general especially <laughs> yeah. when it's out on the internet exposed i mean it's amazing to me hey, no, that they haven't the been hacked <laughs> i was going to say that was yeah yeah, yeah. oh my goodness marion you got <laughs> anything you want to add you want to you want to wrap this up in a bow for us I really don't. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> well, no, I, th- I think it's been a really, it's been a fun discussion. And I think what's interesting is to look at the commonalities in some of what we're saying. And yeah, the the role playing was, was kind of goofy, but it's, it, well, <laughs> hey, look, you, you got to have a, a little too long. <laughs> well, it probably was a little bit too long, but, but still. <laughs> You get to see people's... That's, that's because Billy Bob is one of those difficult customers. Well, hey, you know, he's, he's, he's a man from the heartland, okay? You know? Yeah, you need to make sure that you're charging by the hour for the time on the phone with him. Right. No, I mean... Yeah, and everyone, please send your feedback to info at devmo.fm. That will go straight to Andrew's inbox. It will go to my <laughs> inbox, so if you absolutely hate it, I won't do it anymore, but... Any inappropriate pictures of buffalo? Oh, <laughs> you know, dear God, what are you doing to me, Marion? <laughs> no, I, I still, and, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people hate it, but I still think it's it's kind of fun, which is good because podcasts, especially tech ones, can be a little bit boring. But I think it's also useful to see what people actually are saying in a real world situation, even if it's kind of contrived, as opposed to just you know hitting their bullet points, but. Yeah, it, it, Patrick's right. If you absolutely hate it, let me know. Um, <laughs> but that about wraps it up for another episode of the devmo.fm podcast. To have every episode delivered to your favorite podcast player, subscribe to our RSS or subscribe via iTunes or Google Play. And if you like what we're doing, leave us a review. And if you <laughs> if you hate the bison, I, mean, I guess you can Just leave us a review on that Please don't too. leave us a review. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at devmode.fm. Uh, and we'd love to hear your thoughts on this episode. Leave us a comment on the devmode.fm website, which is a 
great place to leave feedback on uh, the, the bison tannery. Uh, for the devmo.fm podcast, I'm Andrew Welch. I'm Patrick Harrington. I'm Marian Nulevant. And we have our special guest, Ben Perizic from Barrel Strength Design. Thanks for coming on, Ben. Thank you. Was it too much? Was it too much bison, Patrick? <laughs> I heard you laughing, okay? I heard you laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that was a lot of bison. It was too much bison? What do you think, Ben? But, too, too much bison, yes or no? I, I thought it went on a little long, but I, I yeah. thought it led to some interesting things, too. So, Marion, bison? Too much. Well, I kind of, I kind of like the bison. <laughs> <laughs> Marion really settled in well. Like you, you were speaking yeah. her language there. I know. That was impressive. Yeah, I, 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 you know? <laughs> I, I was like.